Welcome back, class. What we're going to be taking a look at now, now that we've finished the neuron, is we're going to take a look at the neuroglial cells. Now, neuroglial cells, remember, in the neural system, we have neurons and we have neuroglial cells. The neuroglial cells are the cells that are not electrically excitable, but they make up half the volume of the central neural system. They're 50 times more numerous than neurons. And we're going to focus on these six neuroglial cells. We have four in the central neural system, and we got two in the peripheral neural system. So we'll talk about the astrocytes, the oligodendrocytes, microglial cells, and ependymal cells. And then we'll talk about Schwann cells and satellite cells. So here, when we're looking at this picture, um, what you'll see is that, okay, we've got some neurons here. Okay, here's another neuron. But then we'll see we have lots of supporting cells. Oligodendrocyte, microglial cell, astrocyte, ependymal cells. Oh, we talked about axons. We spoke about myelin sheath. We spoke about nodes of Ranvier. So let's take a look at some of these um, neuroglial cells. And to try and figure out what some of their primary functions are. So astrocyte, when we look at the word astro, like astrology, uh, it means star-shaped. And what's unique about the astrocyte, what's very important functionally, is that it forms the blood-brain barrier, the BBB, the blood-brain barrier. So here's a process of the neuron and you can see that this astrocyte acts as a bridge of connection between the neurology and the blood vessels. And we need that so that we can metabolize neurotransmitters. We can regulate sodium and potassium balance, which we do need for uh, action potentials to be created. So the astrocytes are important. Oligodendrocytes. Now, you heard me in a previous video talk about Schwann cells, and we know that Schwann cells myelinate, except they myelinate in the peripheral neural system. In the central neural system, we have an oligodendrocyte, and it's the most common glial cell. And each of them forms the myelin sheath around one or more axon, but it does so in the CNS. So it's creating that insulation or that myelin sheath within the brain and the spinal cord, whereas the Schwann cells are doing it in the peripheral neural system. Now, if their body has some sort of autoimmune condition that attacks the oligodendrocyte or an autoimmune condition that attacks the Schwann cell. That means you can't produce myelin. And the purpose of the myelin is to speed up the action potentials, to speed up the conduction of the neurological input and output. If you don't have healthy myelin because of an autoimmune condition attacking the oligodendrocytes or attacking the Schwann cells, we call that disease MS, which is multiple sclerosis. It's when there's a breakdown of the myelin. We also see similar symptoms with people who have a deficiency of B12 because we need this vitamin B12 in order to produce the myelin sheath. It's essential to myelinate. So here's just a picture of showing how the Schwann cells work, right? Here's an axon. And here's a Schwann cell. And it's almost like, like, like a macrophage, right, where it's engulfing the axon. So the Schwann cell and the oligodendrocyte, they're going to go after and locate the axon. And it's going to engulf it, like eat it, and start encircling around and around and around and around and around. And what it creates is this myelin sheath. That's the insulator. It's a conductor and speeds up the action potential. 
just think of any type of electrical cord that you have in your home that's plugged in. You never see the wires. You never see the electrical wires because there's a covering to them. The covering. It's an insulator, right? But if that covering to the electrical wires were stripped away and you could see the electrical wires and you touched it while it was plugged in, you can get shocked. So think of this myelin sheath as the protective covering to your electric cords and the electrical wiring would be the axons. Microglial cells, microglia or microglial, they're the same thing. So these are phagocytic. Microglial cells go after microbes or any type of debris like a Pac-Man. It engulfs it and clears away dead cells and removes dead debris through the neural system. So these microglial cells, they came from a type of white blood cell that's called a monocyte. Monocytes are always in circulation in your blood, but monocytes evolve and become macrophages. And that's what a microglial cells. Macrophages just clear things away through phagocytosis, through phagocytosis. Okay, if it is a monocyte that's engulfing damaged cholesterol, then the monocyte leaves your blood vessels, goes into the tissues, and we call it a foam cell. If that monocyte goes into your lungs to clear away dust, we call it an alveolar dust cell. If it goes to the liver to clear it out, it's called a Kupfer cell. So macrophages have different names depending on the tissues that they go in. But the one when the monocyte goes into your neurology, that's a microglial cell. Appendimal cells, these are appendimal cells. These line uh, the cavities within the brain, the cerebral cavities, they line them. And these appendimal cells, the cavities within the brain, let's say these cavities, these are called ventricles. And we have lateral ventricles in each hemisphere of your brain. So this is one lateral ventricle, and this is the second lateral ventricle. And then the fluid exits, the fluid being the cerebral spinal fluid, the CSF, that fluid enters another chamber called the third ventricle. And then from the third ventricle, it goes to a fourth ventricle. So all this is happening deep within the brain where the CSF, your cerebral spinal fluid, is flowing throughout. And then it's going to go all the way down the spinal cord. And then it's going to go up and around the brain. It's going to bathe the spinal cord and it's going to bathe the brain. So CSF or cerebral spinal fluid acts as like um, a buoy to help float the brain and float the spinal cord to prevent against any type of you know, head trauma and spinal cord trauma. So we want fluid inside the tissue and around the tissue to help buffer it a little bit, cushion it against any type of bony trauma. So the ependymal cells, they produce the cerebral spinal fluid. That's what their function is. Satellite cells, these are just flat cells that surround the neurons, and they're just supporting cells. All they are is supporting neurons in the peripheral neural system. Schwann cell, same as the oligodendrocyte. The difference between the Schwann cell and oligodendrocyte, it's real estate. Location, location, location. Schwann cells are going to myelinate in the peripheral neural system. The oligodendrocytes, that's going to myelinate in the central neural system. And that's the myelin sheath. Speeds up the action potentials. Now remember, in the spinal cord, here's the letter H. This is all gray matter. 
that's all gray, all of this. And everything around it is white matter. So the dorsal horn is gray, the ventral horn is gray, and all out here, this is all white matter. And remember what we have out here are tracks. What type of tracks do we have in the white matter? Sensory and motor tracks. Sensory and motor tracks. But look what happens in the brain. So you have white matter on the outside, you have gray matter on the inside, and that's the spinal cord. But what happens in the brain, it's the exact opposite of that. Gray matter is on the outside, and on the inside is the white matter. It's the exact opposite of what we have in the spinal cord. Okay? All right, so when we look at this, this is the vertebral body. This is the transverse process of the vertebra. This is the spinous process of the vertebra. And here's the vertebral canal where the spinal cord is. And what we have highlighted in the middle, the butterfly, that's the gray matter. Okay. And what's really cool is that if you look right there, and you look right there, that's the swollen part of the dorsal root. That's the dorsal root ganglia. Okay. All right, now we look at the spinal cord, but now it's highlighting the outer region, which is the white matter. Okay, when we come back, we'll talk about different parts of the brain.